A few years ago while visiting Belize, I came across a massive fruiting Malay apple tree. In this tree there was a ton of birds feeding on the fruit and the insects which sounds amazing, but the only problem was this tree was over 50 feet tall. That meant that it was near impossible to get to eye level with a lot of these birds. So I got the idea to use climbing gear to climb a nearby tree and photograph all the wildlife at eye level. I never got around to trying this, but fast forward to this spring when back in Canada, a much smaller cherry tree started to attract some attention from the local wildlife. So I decided to try out that original idea I had, but on a much smaller scale. Using a 16 foot orchard ladder, which if you're going to try this, three legged orchard ladders are just way safer than traditional ladders, but as a disclaimer, use them at your own risk. This ladder was tall enough to bring me at eye level with the top of the tree, and no matter where the wildlife would land and start feeding from, I'd be able to move up and down the ladder to get more intimate shots of them. I went out early in the morning to see what would show up, and I also did a later session in the afternoon to get some additional photos and footage to add to this video. Enjoy. I've made it in the treetops with my camera. That's what I'm here to photograph. I don't know if you heard that high-pitched whistle. Don't worry though, for my camera, I'm wearing a strap. And if you can see behind me, I don't know if you can see it in the tree over here, but there's a bunch of dark red cherries and the cedar waxwings have been in this tree like crazy. I mean, you can hear them, they're right in front of me. Yeah, so it seems like they're very food driven right now. They don't mind my presence. If you saw my video where I was photographing birds in bloom, I mentioned that I felt like the waxwings were getting more and more comfortable with me because I kept spending about half an hour to an hour every day with them, just kind of hanging around with the group, not making too much noise, but just photographing them, filming them. And I think it's paid off because I can be kind of right here on top of them. And yeah, they're just not really bothered by my presence. So enough talking, the light's good. I'm gonna start taking some photos. Stay tuned. Waxwings just finished the round of eating. There's around 15 or 20 of them that are coming. And at this point, it honestly feels like cheating a bit because this is just so easy. It's like there's beautiful greenery in the background. There's beautiful fruit, nice light. Waxwings are landing, they're feeding, they're unfazed. So it's almost like, well, not shooting fish in a barrel. Actually, there should be a new term now, like shooting waxwings in a cherry tree or something. I don't know. Oh, rose-breasted grosbeak. Look at this. I don't have time to zoom out, I'm going to put you guys down. Oh man, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I only saw waxwings all morning and then the second I started talking, a rose-breasted grosbeak showed up. So the one negative thing about this tree is that the cherries are actually pretty big. So I don't know if you've ever seen those photos of the waxwings taking a berry in their mouth and then tossing it up and catching it. They're not really doing that with these. They're more just pecking and tearing off the flesh of the cherry, but I'm definitely not going to complain. These are probably my favorite moments in nature. Oh, a great catbird. Oh, these are... Okay, he's in the tree now. Okay, well, anyways, what I was gonna say is these are probably my favorite moments in nature where the birds or the wildlife know you're there and they just accept you and go about their day and go about their business. And it just feels awesome.
crazy in spring and summertime how quickly the light becomes harsh when there's no clouds. We're pretty much full blue sky right now and we're only a few hours in and it's already almost unusable the light. I will try one more thing with this really harsh light though. Right now I have the wax wings backlit. I'm gonna shift myself over to the other side and get them front lit. Then I'll drop my exposure by one or two stops or maybe even more, I'll see what works best. And what that's gonna do is since I'm underexposing the image, everything that's kind of in the shade will be super, super dark. And everything that's getting hit with the harsh light is gonna just be well illuminated. So I'm hoping that I can maybe get the crest of the wax wing, maybe the red waxy tips on their wings, maybe the yellow parts of the tail. So I don't know if it's gonna work, but when the light gets harsh, instead of just packing it up, I like to kind of experiment with some of this stuff where, you know, it might work, might not, but if you get something good out of it, that's just the bonus. So you can kind of see what I mean here where you have some light patches up here, you have some dark patches over here. So it's just really a matter of lining up the wax wing and waiting for the light to hit it just right. There you go, that's kind of what I was talking about. I don't know if I really explained it too well. You can kind of see how, you know, everything kind of around it is a bit darker and it's really just illuminating this area here. So I'll have to edit this up and maybe crop it a little bit. I'll see what works best. I think I can probably go even darker a bit. So I'll kind of mess around with it and see if I can get some more shots like this. But yeah, that's kind of the effect I was going for if, if that wasn't clear uh, when I was explaining it. It was nice to see that something as simple as a ladder was able to bring me to eye level with one of the prettiest birds in North America. Maybe someday soon I'll be able to travel back to the tropics and test out this technique much higher up in the canopy with all their incredible species down there. But until then, happy birding. Mm -hmm.